Imagine this, you're born looking like a penguin. Everywhere you go, people point at you laughing, calling you a freak. And all you want deep down is to be loved for who you are, despite how ugly the outside can be. But no one ever sees you for anything other than a disfigured penguin. So you learn to hate society for what it did to you, and figure that if people won't love you for who you are, you'll make them love you for something you're not. You keep those who don't care about you in your circle, and constantly try to attain things of value to fill the void of loneliness, and become a cold, bitter human being because your whole life has been a lie. That's the penguin. Growing up with the features of a penguin can come with a ton of cons, I bet you can imagine. Especially because sometimes kids can be pretty cruel. In the past, I talked about Waylon Jones and how Waylon was shunned from society because of his skin condition, which would grow scales all over his body. And his alcoholic aunt would attempt to scrub those scales off of him to make him appear normal. But this never worked, and eventually kids would throw dead fish at him and pick on him for looking like an alligator. So you can only imagine how kids would treat Oswald Cobblepot. Although I'd argue that Waylon got it much worse than Oswald ever did, but what interests me most is how Oswald handled the scrutiny compared to Waylon. Being made fun of constantly for how they both looked, Waylon decided to leave society entirely, whereas Penguin stayed in it, where he'd be made fun of constantly for having Penguin-like features. It made Oswald literally hate his own life, and it only takes so much for someone, especially a kid like Oswald, to break and lash out against those who point their fingers and laugh at them, until they're the ones that get the last laugh in the end. Like in the comic, Joker's Asylum, Penguin. In the beginning of the story, it starts with the Joker banging his head against his cell door, antsy to tell a super secret story about the Penguin. Two-Face practically yells at the Joker to shut the fuck up and so he can get some shut-eye, but Joker yells at him to be quiet unless he wants his eyeballs to turn into jelly. Continuing the story, Joker tells us that this story within a story is about one finding one's soulmate, and what the effects of malicious laughter can do to somebody. Beginning with a flashback to high school, the day of the big dance, and to a boy named Oswald Cobblepot being laughed at. See, Oswald tried popping the question to Allison on if she'd go to prom with him or not, but Allison says to Oswald that she'd never be caught dead with him. Oswald, a little bit confused, brings up a note that Allison left on his desk professing her love for him, but Allison has no idea what Oswald's talking about as her friends laugh hysterically behind her because they pranked Oswald with a fake love note. Allison then joins in on the laughter, leaving an absolutely heartbroken Oswald on the sidelines with the laughter echoing in his head. As we cut to present day with Oswald now the penguin in a limo filled with the laughter of three women. They're basically like using the penguin to eat out at some of the fanciest restaurants in the city like he's Kanye West. And this bothers penguin quite a bit so he just kicks out the ladies from his limo in the middle of good old Gotham night rain. To which the ladies promptly call penguin an ugly little creep as he rides off in his limo. Feeling colder than ever and seeking some enjoyment for himself, the penguin goes to a crime convention. And while walking through the convention, penguin just feels like he should go back home and watch The Sopranos or or something until his interest is peaked. As she did something no one has ever asked from the penguin before. Help. The next morning, the woman awakes to the utmost beautiful view of the gleaming sunset over top Gotham, until she's stricken with fear at the sight of the penguin while he tries to calm her down, reaffirming that he won't harm her and he didn't buy her to be a slave, stating that the way she was being treated was beyond savage and he simply wouldn't stand for it. The woman, bursting with joy, hugs the penguin, thanking him endlessly, filling Penguin's heart with something he's never experienced before. Love. Weeks go by, and Penguin can't get enough of the woman, learning that her name is actually Violet. They've been together for two weeks now, and Penguin's astounded at how much she brightens up the place. A goon is then thrown towards the wall while Penguin asks if he by chance noticed Violet's new decorations, commenting on how different Violet is compared to the other women he's surrounded himself with as the Penguin. Like how Violet doesn't want Penguin to give her wicked expensive gifts, rather just spend quality time together instead. And they'll spend hours together just talking about the most random things ever, or they'll talk about Penguin's most favorite thing in the whole wide world, his birds. He has her as his computer background and is so in love with Violet he hasn't given any thought to crime at all for at least two days. Believing that he's finally met his soulmate after so many years of thinking that the idea of love and soulmates to be preposterous. Batman after beating up the goons tells Penguin that he'll be watching him, but Penguin just thinks about Violet. A couple nights later, Penguin takes Violet to one of the fanciest dinner places in Gotham. Penguin holds Violet's hands and begins to tell her that for the past few weeks of knowing one another, <coughs> that Violet has saved him and could have never believed that in a million years he would ever find someone he truly could be himself with 
but upon confessing his love for Violet, he's then cut off by an overtly loud sound of laughter, and looking over his shoulder, he'd see a cook laughing hysterically in the penguin's direction. Now, he could have been laughing about anything, nothing malicious to it at all, but in the end, it didn't really matter to Penguin as he reached for his steak knife. But before anything could happen, Violet stopped him and demanded to know what he was going to do. Penguin flustered would then catch himself and tell Violet that it's nothing, let's just enjoy our dinner. They then enjoyed their meal and went on to have a pretty great evening, but it wasn't the end of that whole debacle. Because the following day, the restaurant had a new owner who fired all employees and closed down the place for good. The day after losing his job, the chef's wife was then deported back to Romania and his best friend was arrested for some no-no photos of kids. Day after that, a new tenant moved into the apartment next to his and non-stop blared loud music so the chef couldn't get a single iota of sleep. The church the chef went to every Sunday became infested with killer bees and was forced to close down. The park he'd like to read at was bulldozed and then the chef who was a recovering alcoholic woke one morning to find a 24-hour liquor store was open just across the street from his apartment. Less than two months after the chef laughed in Penguin's general direction, a janitor found the chef hung inside of a bus station bathroom. And the day after that, the Penguin was more happy to see his name in the obituaries than ever. Violet saw Penguin's villainous grin and it sent a chill down her spine because instinctively she knew that that was a grin of someone who hurt another person. Grabbing the book Penguin would use to glue newspaper articles inside, she'd sift through it till she found the article of the chef who hung himself, wondering what Penguin has done. Reading further, she began to see all the horrific things that Penguin has ever done to ordinary people who only just laughed at the Penguin. As we then flash back to the girls who played that joke on Oswald that were the first to taste his wrath to learn what it meant to laugh at the penguin. As a flock of vicious birds brutally attacked the girls after being sent by a vengeful Oswald. Back to the present, Penguin arrives back home trying to look for Violet but can't find her anywhere, until he arrives to their bedroom with a pair of freshly cut roses, to find Violet packing her things. Violet, scared for her life, begs Penguin to spare her after finding out everything that he's done. Calling Penguin a monster for all the horrific things he's done to others, shocked that she didn't see how much of a monster he truly was till now. Penguin then yells at Violet to stop calling him a monster, but Violet doesn't care as she tells Oswald that she's leaving tonight, to which the Penguin looks back at Violet, gritting his teeth, telling Violet that Oswald isn't his name. Flashing back again, we see the three girls after the attack, charging at Oswald with bats in hand, beating the shit out of him, until they eventually have their fill telling Oswald to stay away from girls for the rest of his natural born life. Oswald, after the beating, crawls over to his birds, the one sole thing he loves more than anything else in this world. But upon touching one of them, it bites at Oswald, filling him with rage. As he takes one of the bats the girls used, to hit each of his beloved birds, till each and every one of them lay dead on the floor. But after killing them all, Oswald realized that he had killed the only thing that brought him true happiness, as he cried on the floor for hours after apologizing. Back in the present, Penguin is sorry that things couldn't work out between them, saying that these things just happen and there isn't anything that could be done, but hopes that with time they'll both get over it and stay friends, wishing Violet nothing but the best for her in the next chapter of her life. And as a girl whisks Penguin away for a fancy dinner, Penguin says goodbye to Violet in the very same place they both met, inside a cage. As the two part ways, Penguin was the one who got the last laugh in the end. But what Penguin could never in his life realize was that those who end up with the last laugh are the ones who usually end up laughing alone. I love this Penguin comic a lot because of how it shows how Penguin came to be such a vile human being. All his life people pointed at him laughing, and Oswald eventually broke. Whatever innocence he had as a kid was destroyed after that singular prank those girls pulled on Oswald. Of course, there were probably many other things at play during his childhood that affected his innocence, but this was his first act of cruelty, paving the way for so much more. And to me, it's very interesting to see how it all unfolded to present day. Like, it somehow makes you feel bad for Penguin? But then when he sells Violet to be a slave again, you're just like, yeah, he's a messed up human being through and through. There's like nothing redeemable about him. Penguin has some serious anger issues and has no actual coping mechanism other than destroying things. And it seems to be that the trigger for his anger is laughing, no matter the circumstance. I can only imagine what a team up with the Joker would look like. But it just goes to show that if you laugh at the Penguin, he'll be the one who gets the last laugh. I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.